Hi there, history fans. So today we have another video about Polish history and the video is called The Unconquered from APN TV. Uh, this one was a patron suggestion a while ago and I decided to take it up today because what like two, three days ago I made a video about, uh, you know, like the whole history of, of Poland. So I decided like it kind of fits now. Um, okay, so we have also a new patron member, Kelly. Thank you for your support and also for all patrons who are supporting a uh, future project, but also everybody who subscribed to this channel and who's commenting and who is a part of this great community. I really appreciate every single one of you. Okay, uh, so as always, I'm going to give some thoughts, opinions, ad additional information. If you want to correct me, add something, uh, feel free to do it in the comment section uh, below. Okay, let's jump into the video. Nobody thought the war and its effects would last half a century for Poland. Uh, yeah, if you want to uh, watch the video, you know, like without commentary or anything, the link is going to be in the description below. So, yeah. <laughs> First, Germany attacks. Then Soviet Russia. We don't give up, despite being left on our own. We create an underground state, complete with a government, an army, schools, and courts. We suffer. Okay, so as I said many times, now bear with me. As I said many times before, Poland is in a unique position geographically because it's between two superpowers all the time. So you had Prussia or later on Germany on the western border and then you had Russia and the Soviet Union on the eastern border. Okay, and Poland geographically is mostly flatland, so it's perfect for, you know, like blitzkrieg tactics, you know, like mechanized units uh, and, you know, like quick tactics and movements and so on. So it was always kind of in that pincer uh, situation. And after the First World War, yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, like uh, Germany uh, lost parts of Prussia to Poland, uh, then the Poles gained, you know, like their independence and also fought in the Polish-Soviet uh, uh, war where they defeated the Soviets. So Germany and the Soviet Union had interests in Poland and the pact Ribbentrop-Molotov was actually done before the beginning of the Second World War, so before the invasion of Germany into Poland and then I think two weeks later on uh, the Soviets invaded from the east but in that pact, in that non-aggression pact, Ribbentrop-Molotov, there was also a clause about influence sphere in Poland, the Baltic states, Finland, and so on. So, yeah. Two occupations. The Germans murder millions of Polish civilians. The Soviets deport Poles in cattle cars to gulags in the east. They shoot over 20,000 officers during the Katyn massacre. Yeah. And hundreds of thousands of Poles one. are forced into slave labor in the inhuman lands of the Soviet Union. The thing is, the thing is, okay. Now, uh, there's something interesting about the Katyn massacre. Uh, but we all know what the Germans did with their camps, uh, Auschwitz-Birkenau, Treblinka, Sobibor, and so on. Uh, but I think that Ka Katyn uh, the, the Katyn Forest Massacre isn't that widely known throughout the world. Correct me if I'm wrong, correct me if you, if you know about that, um, if you learned it in school, in textbooks or whatever. Uh, but the thing is, uh, when the Germans advanced, the interesting thing about Katyn is when the Germans adva advance into the Soviet Union with their Operation Barbarossa, they also uh, took the, that part where the, where the Katyn Forest is, they found the graves, they contacted the, uh, the Polish government in exile, which was in London, and said, you know, like, hey, look at what, what the Soviets are doing to the Poles. And Stalin replied, you know, like, no, it's just German propaganda. Probably the Germans did it on their own and uh, so on. But eventually, after the Soviet Union was dissolved, uh, the, the government of Russia acknowledged that the Soviet Union did it. Uh, so in uh, the 90s. 
uh, they admitted that, that the Soviet Union did it. Ah, now my Polish uh, with the crazy L. Uh, Anders army, uh, it's Władysław. Władysław Anders, a big story. Look it up, look it up on the internet. I, I, I kid you not, you won't regret, regret it. It's an interesting story. Wadiswab Our army Anders. is reborn, moving Wadiswab. west, where our soldiers are already fighting alongside the Allies. Ah, let's see what, what I know. Which one? Where our soldiers are already fighting alongside the Allies. Okay. Um, okay, I know this one. I know that Polish soldiers were involved also in the defense of France after Pol Pol Poland fell. Germany attacks also France and the Benelux states, but Polish soldiers were involved in the defense of France. They were also involved in the Royal Air Force in the Battle of Britain. Uh, Narvik, I also know, that's the when the uh, when the Polish Highland Brigade, I think it's the name, the Polish Highland Brigade was formed. They were also sent there. Sinking of Bismarck. You need to help me with that. Battle of Arnhem. Don't know. Lenino. So with these three, you need to help me. And Monte Cassino, yeah, that's that's a famous battle where where the Allies tried to push Germans from, you know, like central Italy to northern Italy, and they wanted to break uh, through uh, near the city and the monastery Monte Cassino which is near Rome, but they failed, I think, two or three times. And then in the fourth push, they pushed the Germans and broke their defenses. So I know this one, this, this, and this, but I don't, I really don't know this. I hope that somebody is going to answer it in the comment section. Nice. We conquer Monte Cassino. Yeah. Our fighters wreak havoc and fear by air too. Yeah, the Royal Air Force. The Germans call us Black Devils as we crush their resistance. Paratroopers make their way to occupied Poland to support the underground state, while our counterintelligence acquires secret plans of the enemy. I think I think that they're uh, talking here about Witold Pilecki. Or? Because I know that Witold was actually... Uh, that's an interesting... Look it up. Look, look everything up that I'm seeing. Witold Pilecki was a guy that volunteered to go to Auschwitz. He was part of the Polish resistance movement. And he went into... Uh, you know, like he was part of the intelligence... So he's gathering intelligence and sending them to the Allies. But eventually he went also voluntarily to Auschwitz and sent what's happening there to, you know, like uh, Great Britain. It's an interesting story. Look it up. There are Poles who save Jews despite the threat of the death penalty. Yeah. We create resistance movements even within the German concentration camps. We are the first to alert the world about the Holocaust. Yeah, they're, they're definitely talking about Pilecki. They're definitely talking about Pilecki. Definitely. Though politics appear to be more important than human lives. And nobody listens to us. Polish Jews fight the Germans in the Warsaw Ghetto yeah. without even a chance for success. Our nation comes up from the underground and fights in the Warsaw Uprising. Warszawa. Warszawa. Uh, uh, the thing is, I was I was in Poland actually in Krakow and Warsaw, uh, and it's kind of sad when you you know like when, when the when the uh, especially in the Pol uh, in the Warsaw Uprising, 
uh, when the Poles, the Armia Krajowa fought against the Germans to liberate, and Armia Krajowa was more pro-Western, and Armia Ludowa was more soviet oriented But there were different resistance groups, also Jewish resistance groups and uh, peasant resistance groups and so on. Uh, but the Warsaw Uprising was led by Armia Krajowa, and as far as I know, when I was in the museum, uh, they told us that this sign was actually the sign of the underground state, the so-called underground state, and also of the Armia Krajowa. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, but, but as far as I know, the P with the hooks uh, is the sign of Armia Krajowa, so the ones that fought in the Warsaw Uprising. Yeah, the, 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 the um, Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, they didn't have a chance. The Germans were superior to them. They had more uh, manpower and, and, and equ better equipment, tanks and so on. In the Warsaw Uprising, yeah, the Poles also didn't have any chance because the Soviet Union didn't want to back Armia Krajowa, which was more uh, Western orientated, let's call it that way. Uh, so they waited until the Germans crushed that um, resistance and then they moved on, uh, moved into Warsaw. But it's kind of sad that, you know, like an old city like Warsaw uh, was, I think, 80% or something like that was destroyed in this uprising. So it's, it's really sad that, you know, like you go through Warsaw and it's mostly, you know, like from the communist era and on. Uh, the architecture and so on. You 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 don't find much old buildings that were uh, made, you know, like in the Prussian era or you know, like uh, before the partitions and so on. Amazing. It's kind of sad. No chance. No chance. Enigma. We break the German Enigma code, saving millions of lives. But in exchange for all that we do, we are betrayed. The free world distant. Okay, let, let, let's just go a little bit to the to the Enigma machine. Uh, everybody knows about Bletchley Park and Alan Turing and his uh, Turing machine, with which helped him to decode, you know, like the Enigma machine, uh, which is told to be the first computer uh, and the basics of computing and so on. But the thing is, there is a Polish guy called Marian Rajewski, Rajewski or Rajewski, Marian Rajewski or Rajewski, I'm not sure. Correct me or, or add it in the comments. But he was a guy who actually uh, made a system called the Bomba, Bomb. Uh, which decoded also the Enigma code, but it was too slow for the Allies because the Enigma would restart every day. So a new formula or a new code would be instated. So you needed to, to break the code every day, but the bomb was too slow to do that. And that's why uh, the Brits eventually, you know, like called up Alan Turing and the, and the Ultra Project in the Bletchley Park where they made this and also as far as I know uh, Marian was also the one who made a copy of the Enigma machine and also sent it to the Brits so they could analyze the machine but yeah Poles had a big big uh, impact on breaking the Enigma uh, code which helped the Allies you know like intercept the messages that German units are sending between them saving millions of lives but in exchange for all that we do, we are betrayed. The free world distances itself from us, leaving us behind the Iron Curtain. Despite our scars from the war, we still resist. Okay, um, okay, so after the Second World War, yeah, um, Yalta, so, so, I know that a lot of Poles are going, probably going to disagree with me, but Stalin made this argument on Yalta, which I think is a valid one and that everybody should need to take into account. So his argument was Soviet soldiers and Russian soldiers 
fought on the Eastern Front and Russian and Soviet soldiers together with Polish soldiers, Armia Ludowa, uh, liberated Poland from the Germans and that, that was their main argument why Poland should be under the influence sphere of the Soviets and not the West. But interesting thing, uh, Winston Churchill was actually a firm believer in Polish independence and he wanted to, you know, like, uh, reinstate and, uh, you know, like, uh, an independent Poland free of either the East or the West, so a neutral Poland as far as I know. But Churchill was a firm believer of an independent Poland. Okay. Despite our scars from the war, we still resist. Poznan, Warsaw, Gdańsk. The Pope gives us strength. Workers strike spread throughout Poland. The communists lose. The Iron Curtain falls. The war is over. We prevail. Because we do not beg for freedom. Bah. We fight for it. <laughs> bah. Nice. Now bear with me, bear with me. Don't, don't tune out. Uh, just a quick note. Uh, yeah. The biggest worker union in Poland, with also the biggest political power, was called Solidarność, Solidarity. And they pushed for those worker strikes and, and, you know, like boycotts and so on. And sometimes they were effective, sometimes not, sometimes, sometimes they were crushed. And in some instances, uh, and mostly they were, you know, like subjugated and, and crushed. But in some instances, Poland uh, gained some autonomy from Moscow, you know, like not independence, but autonomy in regards on some laws that they could pass. And uh, yeah, Solidarność played a big role. And then they mentioned also the Pope, uh, which was Karoj Wojtyla, Wo oh God, Karoj Wojtyla, uh, which was the first Polish Pope and that, you know, like ignited the Polish national fever or not national sentiment because, you know, like the Soviets or the ideology of the Soviets was, uh, you know, like, uh, what is it called? Oh God, not, Mm. It was atheistic, so non-religious, and it was also, you know, like, we don't want an independent Poland, but Karoj Wojtyla, with all his influence as the Pope, wanted or was a firm believer in Polish independence, and Poland is also a deeply Catholic uh, nation, so they also identified even more with, you know, like, the, the, the Roman Catholic Church and because he's now the, the head and so on. So Karoj Wojtyla as the Pope, as a Pope with Polish origins, had a big, big, big impact on, on you know, like, those movements inside of Poland. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you want to add, correct me on anything or something like that, feel free to do it in the comment section below. If you want to be part of our community, we now hit 5,000 subscribers. Oh my God, I, it's crazy. Um, if you want to be part of, you know, like the YouTube channel, just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you want to support future projects directly, uh, the link to the Patreon account is going to be in the description below. Okay, as always, see ya until next time.